frequently regurgitates. <laughs> I mean, if my diet was VCM, I think I might frequently regurgitate as well. That doesn't sound so anomalous to me. Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, where we're going to store some of this wonderful ferrite dust and take a small break from this area. I think we've we've done enough um, and discovered enough, and at this point, really, I would I would just like to to go on my way with discovery and not necessarily um, stay here and continue figuring this out. Uh, not to say that we won't, we definitely will, uh, but I think I think it's very safe to say I want to do some of this discovery in my downtime. Maybe I'll, I'll fill around a bit with um, with another another save file so I can do some experimentation um, off camera, not all of my experimentation, not at all. That would be really against the spirit of the series, but some. Uh, I really do not wish to have an entire episode of experimentation happen over and over and over and over again. I know we've already done a couple, but let's let's leave it at that, shall we? Now, what we can do. We can safely place all this ferrite dust in our ferrite dust for days storage. Boom, boom. Look at that. Getting there. Very nice. Then I think we'll put this oxygen in high capacity storage. We'll process this rare metal element, get that pure ferrite going into our cargo. And then it's full, is it? Is it? You don't say. And look at these poor creatures. They're dying for food. We need to free them. You're free. You're no longer trapped over here. You can wander around to your heart's content. Here, for this automated feeder, we'll get the job done. Okay, no, they're, they're still trapped. They have no ability to improve their station in life. They're just, they choose to stay here. We're gonna let this thing continue gathering milk. Pure ferrite, and I think we can depart with you. Glass, glass. Uh, you're gonna go to the freighter, actually. We'll call upon you when we need you. How about that? How about that? Uh, let's see. If we go, oh, it's raining animal food on our head, and they're still trapped over here. They just can't figure things out in life. Do we need to cull the herd? No. I dare say we uh, we shan't do that. That is that is not how we're going to do things here. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and upload this. And then over here, yes, we'll replace the frost crystal we turned into glass. I'm okay with those terms. And yeah, we're not going to hold that extra. Okay, I think this is pretty good, fairly good for now. Let's, uh, you know, I've really, I've got to follow my heart when it comes to these things. And really what I want to do is, um, is explore. I want to, want to explore. So I'm thinking, we call the Relentless Overhead. And let's go see about going someplace new, shall we? Whoa, whoa, look out. The Relentless. Wonderful. Still taming creatures down there. Who is visiting my 
Oh. Some random exploration craft. No, 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 no. We just simply don't have the time. We need to warp. As I understand it, there's likely to be lots of systems nearby worth exploration. Oh, look at this. Is this a red star? Two planets uninhabited? Nearby... Oh, yeah, here it is. The Thranxian Conflagration. Well, we might as well start discovering places nearby and naming them so we can start to talk about a tag so that other people discovering locations can help add them to our region of space. Yep, this is good. Let's go to an unexplored system. Oh, very good. Very good. And look, the nebula color does not change much in this neighboring star. In fact, I dare say it's greener than before. Well, we must take the living ship. The nightmare in space uh, must must go with us. A little bit more teal than lime. Oh no, no, call it sea foam. Yes. Sea foam, I believe, is the appropriate color. Uh, and what sort of planet do we have here? A fractured planet. Fun and exciting. And what sort of planet do we have over here? A foaming planet. Oh my goodness, do I love foaming planets. Let's start with the one we're close by at. couple of decorative planets right next door. I say decorative like there are personal shopping center for base decorations, but in a way they sort of are. This is really nice because we have the the mushrooms with the electronics wired into them as the moon for our capital planet. And then here we have the broken screens of glass in a, I don't know, it's difficult to say what sort of atmosphere this is with the sun setting. Oof. I dare say we should land, though, and maybe stop running into things. All right, let's set it down. Let's see what we have here. I simply love the way these planets look now. It's like my eyes have been opened for the first time. Ooh, ooh. The life form has valuable blood. I'll be the judge of that. Seems like it's fairly easy to find these decorations. Mm, okay, they are skittish. Showing some signs of intelligence. I just... It's tough to fathom the, the vistas. It's very important to stop and, and watch the campfire for a little bit. Just 
sit around the fire and check things out. Boy, I almost wish these stalactite looking formations. I almost wish they were decorations that we could take back to our base. Okay. We have... Well. We have indeed seen what this planet has to offer, I dare say we need to travel to the next one. As I tend to like the other planets more than anything else. In fact, I dare say foaming planets are quite possibly of the anomalous planets my absolute favorite. go. I think we should go to the day side. Is that a blue sky? A blue atmosphere? And the ground seems almost reflective of the sea foam background colors in the nebula, it almost makes me think maybe there's a high metallic content. What did, what did we scan on this planet again? Cadmium, gold, and salt. Well, gold is quite reflective. There might be more gold in the atmosphere than we originally, or in the, in the surface than we originally thought. Look at this. Mountains above the clouds. Mountains in the clouds. What? What, what, what? It is. These mountains are in the clouds. This peak is so high up. Clouds blowing across the mountaintops. many bubbles as a ha ha ha. Here we go. Mm, let's, yeah, let's, let's work our way down, shall we? Well, look, it continues down. Downward still. Hell yeah, here we go. How fun. Yes! I must have bubbles. We are going to need to gather more and more of these sorts of decorations. It's like a bubble bath planet. With a blue sky, I'm happy with that. Oh, that's right. We have observant sentinels in this system. Now, this planet is too beautiful to mar with combat with the sentinels. That's, that's not okay. But we can still try to descend into this ravine. It almost seems like the bubbles are a little denser at lower altitudes. Aha! We've discovered life. Fluctuating age. Unafraid behavior. Diet feces. Yeah, frequently regurgitates. 
<laughs> I mean, if my diet was VCM, I think I might frequently regurgitate as well. That doesn't sound so anomalous to me. It's almost like we could just reach out and pop these bubbles. Oh, did we pop it? No. No, it's just from the inside of it. It looks... Oh, look at this one. Oh, it's like a perfect little little iridescent droplet of every color in the sunset. That's neat. Oh, and then it's gone. This is fun, however, comma. I'd like to get out of this pit, please. Thank you. Oh. Look at the beautiful sights. Definitely a time to stop and look at look into the fire. Exciting. I'm tempted to go look into these caves, but at the same time, I sort of want to leave this system already. Not that it isn't a great system to accumulate decorations on, but... But I think we need something else in our lives. Do you know what we could do? Nightmare in space, will you please assist me? Oh my gosh. Well, if we have to go back up to our perch, then so, so be it. I think we should look for some space anomalies while we're here in this system, actually. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, things are... things are a little anomalous indeed. The Atlas does not like us on these planets where the boundary... yeah, the reality boundary is already down to minus 40. We need to get out of here. All right, let's try scan, and then we're gonna pulse jump on out of here. How about that? No? Okay. Maybe we need to realign with our ship. How about that? Fairly certain we can get our fuel straightened out. There it is. Oh. What have we here? An ironbound relic. Oh, we've seen these. It's, uh. Whoa, 2,000 silver. Whoa. I accept those terms. Here, let's get another one, shall we? Thousand silver is rather nice, actually. That will come in in handy significantly when we're trying to expand our capital ship. Whoa! It's a child of Helios. Incoming message. What? Yeah, not before we document this this finding. All right. What say you? Doubting. A wave of calm washes over me as my communicator tunes itself to this beautiful giant. Its message is no conventional broadcast, but an analog transmission of pure emotion. 
and let the feeling take hold as I contemplate the being before me. It is quite massive, something to behold. Dare we shoot it? Oh. No damage received. The child of Helios is not bothered with our small... Oh, oh! But its tentacles, oh, are tremendously dangerous. Oh, mess with the bull and you get the horns. Oh my goodness. Well, it tried to make us calm, and then we tried to fly into its tentacles, and it had to remind us that kindness is not weakness. Which I, I kind of, I already know that, but it reminded us that that was the case. And now I feel good and reminded of that. Okay, this works for me. A fun little process. Hmm. I dare say it will be time for us to travel to another system. We have more discoveries to make. Okay, so as it turns out, I forgot something actually very important. And it was mentioned during the taxi stream that we need to come up with a naming convention. And at first I kind of thought to myself, well, you know, it's, it's unlikely we'll be able to get everybody on board with the same naming convention. But then I thought, you know, that shouldn't stop us from trying. So if systems have already been uploaded and, and all of that, that's... That's perfectly fine, but I did some research and I found out sort of what the accepted naming convention is for the Galactic Hub project and we're going to, uh, I mean, not reinvent the wheel. So we're going to go ahead and use a similar setup and that involves using the signal booster here. So as you can see, the last four digits are 01F9, so we're just going to drop the first zero. Uh, and use one F9. So let's see, if we look at our discoveries for this system, yes, rename and upload, it should be able to be, let's see, um, how interesting. No, what we want is, uh, let's see, let's see if we go fire one, and then 1F J, was it? 1F9. Right. Right? Okay, so I think the way we'll do this, it's 1F9. I think the way we'll do this, and again, it doesn't matter, but we might as well do it um, just for fun. Uh, we'll say this, this region is fire one, uh, 1F9, and then we'll just call this one Failed Reality, uh, just because it has two planets. Now, there's other naming conventions we can do. I don't really see a point to doing all of that, but I'll explain the Fire One in just a minute for those that aren't familiar with the tagging system, um, and then we'll just go ahead and upload it. Fire One, 1F9, Failed Reality, because the 1F9 is the last four on our signal booster. All right, so Fire 1 actually comes from the region that we're in. Now, if you go to the galactic center here, you can see if you expand the details, it tells you the region that the star is in, the Horlery, Horler, Horlery Void. Horlery Void. Hmm. Try saying that a bunch. Well, that's the same region as the Thringsian Conflagration capital. So everything within the 
Horleary Void would be uh, Fire 1. Once you leave that, you have the Jav Javasi Terminus. That would be, you know, that would be a different region. So each region would be would be different. I suppose if you want to get really technical and try to keep everything labeled uh, the same for each region, we would have to coordinate on Discord. And again, this is where it starts to get a little ridiculous because you can see these regions change dramatically, dramatically. Look at them all. They just go on and on and on. And in order to be coordinated, to be all on the same page, we would need a massive endeavor. Uh, much like the Galactic Hub project. Now, we're just a little operation. I don't know if we're ever going to get to be anything even close to that. Um, but I've been very cautious not to upload any of my discoveries so far in this area. And if we just go to... Uh, we do not have the... Wait, wait, wait. Is this... Yes, there it is. Nebula Capital. So that is in the Bubianati Terminus. So what we can say for sure is anything in that region belongs to Nebula. Uh, we're partnered with them, um, but we're not going to invoke our naming convention onto them. We're just neighbors, you know, and we're going to try to uh, coexist. We are going to coexist. Um, but for our region, I had multiple people recommend we use some sort of naming convention. And while I think it might be incredibly difficult to coordinate, that's what it is. So the Horleary Void will be Fire 1, and if you want to start coordinating naming conventions, um, feel free to do so with other Thranxian travelers on the Discord. Now that being said, I think we should actually depart this one and head to this one. Uh, only one planet, but um, yeah in the same region, so fun fun. Let's go see what this planet has. Ooh, dark nebula. One planet. And it's a hot planet. Oh, and I jumped without my freighter. What a goofball. Okay, well, let's head on down. Prep for planetary analysis. Oh, it appears we're trying to land in the middle of a firestorm. We're getting a lot of resistance here. Yep, there's the terrain, the first thruster. Oh. And with the red hot sky, too. Look at these land formations. How they just reach out like a giant arm. No, let's land on this. I've decided we're landing here. Oh, thank goodness the storm is clearing. Direct sunlight. Fauna not present? Well, I think that just means they're few and far between. I would imagine this planet would actually sustain life. I would find it hard to believe that it wouldn't, actually. Hey, look at that! Landscape photo achieved! Let's get our signal booster down. And see, we are 0, 2, 0, Bravo. So we're just going to drop the initial 0. We'll keep all the rest, uh, just like... Just like it makes sense. So 2, 0, Bravo will be the designation for this system. Fire 1... Two zero Bravo, and this system will be called Fiery uh, Abandoned Skies. Yeah, whatever you want to. I mean, you know, uh, the tag is originally, I guess, just to help with navigation. Um, they, they, from what I saw, they recommended a lot of other tags you could add. You know, you could put in a dollar sign if it was a high wealth system. You could put in, you know, a, a moniker if you found a, a nice fighter ship for for people. I don't necessarily for for one these systems are are um, undiscovered, uncharted, so it doesn't matter. 
uh, two, I think the more difficult we make this system, the more likely we are that things will not be labeled properly. And in fact, you know, it doesn't even matter necessarily if they get labeled uh, incorrectly. I think it's just more fun. So I want to keep it light and fun, and I, I don't want to impose a whole lot of other requirements. So I think once you put the hub tag, if you do want to stick with naming convention, anything you feel like adding, again, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Solar vine, well... says no fauna. I am curious. I'm fairly certain if I go here, yeah, nine fauna. Maybe it just means it's incredibly sparsely populated. Oh my. We do need some selenium, so I think we should, in fact, head on over to this cropping of solar vine over here as we prep for a limited planetary analysis. Oh yeah, this is a very ripe crop here. Growing wild, you don't get quite as much as you would like from the wild growth. But it is still nice to stumble upon Oh, you can really feel that sun just cooking the sensors. The suit is doing everything it can to hold the heat off of us. You can tell it's there. Look as the flora smokes in the sunlight, just smolders. And I imagine it's evolved to, to handle it as well, and it just doesn't matter. Protoskeletal. It's autotrophic. Mm. And it regenerates. Well, I imagine it would have to regenerate given the amount of sun damage it would take every day cycle. Look at this. Luckily, the sun is starting to set, so things on this side of the planet will get a reprieve for a bit. Photosynthesis. I commend your efforts. Although I imagine if you are heat resistant, there's lots of photosynthesis here to be made with such direct sunlight. I don't quite understand this phenomenon. Must be some some bit of magnetics. I don't know. Fireberry. I think we've abandoned our our, our ship, the Living Night, uh, the Nightmare in Space. A bit high up. Sure. I accept those terms. Let's... Ooh, found a creature. Ah, nocturnal. They came out at night. That makes sense, trying to avoid the, uh, the direct heat from the sun. Scented herbs, skittish, eats cave marrow, fears the rain. Well, I imagine it would fear the rain, because that's probably what, like a once a millennia type of occurrence on this planet, if that? I think, really, when it comes down to it, the creature being nocturnal makes a tremendous amount of sense. That is exactly why we did not see it until the sun went down. And here we are, unable to make any sort of connection with... Oh, oh, oh. Hello. What have we here? Carbon crystals. I think we're good for... No, no, we're not. What do you know? All right, well then... Carbon crystals belong to me now. Destabilized sodium? No, thank you. Chloride lattice? I'm okay. 
Oh, such peculiar formations under this rock in the shade. I imagine even with direct sunlight, ground up shells. High in phosphorus. So down here, in the perpetual shade, oh, look at that. It's actually fairly cool, or it was for a brief moment. Hold on. We found a cool spot. There it is. Oh, nope, nope, oh, oh, it's trying. Interesting. So even on the night side of the planet, most of the surface here is just sweltering hot until... Yeah, until you peek around this giant structure that's been keeping shade here for who knows how long. But there were a few, a few locations where the ground was cool to the touch. Alright, let's, let's not fight with the terrain. Oh. Okay. What an interesting location. And look, the crystals continue up here. I think we'll I think we'll just press on. Truth be told. I'm not in a position where I want... Oh, oh, you don't say. More than a stack of electric cubes. I accept those terms. I think at this point, it's safe to say that um, with these two small steps, we have begun the colonization of the... Orlerary Void and bringing it into the Thranxian Conflagration. Let's return to the Relentless and assess what is next on our to-do list. I don't think I'm yet ready to return to base construction at this time. Although, the Relentless needs some work as well. No, I think that will do it for this episode. We'll see what happens in the next one. Until then, take care.